Now, Marshall's East Africa Limited is what features in Who Owns Kenya tonight. The motor vehicle dealership firm was recently in the news when it was reported that the controversial wheeler dealer and business tycoon Kamle Shpatni had surreptitiously offloaded his shareholding in the company. Patni, in famous for his role in the multi-billion shilling golden bag scandal, had indicated his intention to sell uh, his shares in the company in March this year, but it wasn't until towards the end of last month that it became apparent that he had sold. Now, the news that Patni had disposed of his shares in Marshalls touched off a corporate storm with Oriental Commercial Bank issuing a public notice that it had a lien on Patni's shares because the shares had been used as security for a loan. Oriental Commercial Bank, which previously operated as Delphi's bank when Patni's partner, a bit of business rival, uh, Ketan Somaya, owned it, uh, cautioned that Patni's shares in Marshalls were not sellable because they had been used as collateral for an unpaid loan. But apparently, this may become a case of bolting the stable after the horse has bolted out, considering that the latest shareholder list for Marshalls does not feature Patni or any of his companies. Now, Marshall's East Africa dates back to, the, to 1937, when British entrepreneur Sidney Marshall founded Marshall's Food Products Limited in the UK. It was this company that was to convert later into light machinery, garage equipment, and a motor vehicle dealership firm that is today Marshall's East Africa Limited. At its height in the 1970s and 80s, Marshall's was synonymous with Peugeot vehicles, uh, which it made popular throughout East Africa before it lost the franchise owing to internal problems. Shareholders and boardroom wrangles between Keitan Somaya and Kamlesh Patni put a strain uh, on the company, negatively affecting its performance and ability to retain key staff. Interestingly, Marshall's East Africa is one company that features three of the most controversial business tycoons in Kenya's recent history, Ketan Somaya, Kamlesh Patni, and Ali Punjani, the coastal business mogul who reportedly enjoys high-level links in State House. Today, Marshall's is a pale shadow of its former self. The company's products line has thinned out significantly, leaving it holding franchise only for vehicles and machinery from Korea, India, and a few other manufacturers. The company's profitability has also dwindled. Last year, Marshall's East Africa made a net loss of 50 million shillings, which was an improvement from the previous year's net loss of 94 million shillings. So, who owns this company that was once the crown jewel of motor vehicle dealership industry in the region? Here we go, but we will look at the shareholders list last year and shareholders list as of July this year. Kamlesh Patni. A uh, shareholding that is by, 90, uh, by 2011, 50.7%. Shareholding by July 2012 is nil, of course. Global Limited didn't have any shares in 2011. In 2012, July, 13% shareholding. Woodside Limited, 13.36% in July 2011. And now, uh, July, by July 2012, 12.3%. Abna Holdings Limited, 1.06% July 2011. In July 2012, 9.23%. As Vermeth Investments Limited didn't have any shareholding in 2011, but in July 2012, 7.61%. Aho Investment Limited, 2.43%. Uh, July 2011, July 2012, 7.2%. Cobos Limited didn't have any shareholding in 2011. Uh, by July 2012, they had 6.96%. 6 Ramoth Holdings Limited, 2.92%. That is last year, 5.7% in 2012. IG Loan Investments Limited, 2.06% 2011, and now 4.32%. And Kenna's Holdings Limited, 4.17% as of July 2012. Kirtesh Shah, 3.28% as of July 2012. Mukesh Vaya, 2.08% 2012 July. Uh, others, of course, categorized as others there, 23.26% by July 2012. We now go to the quote of the week. It says, the greatest glory in business life is not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall. That again, the greatest glory in business life is not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall.